Ultrasounds are one of the most widespread forms of medical imaging. They're cheap and very good at looking at soft tissues, including famously foetuses. They date back over 50 years, but that doesn't stop Dr Graham Treese working on ways of improving them. Well, it, it's what the name suggests. It's, it's sound, but at a much higher frequency. Um, so whereas um, normal sound you can hear with your ear, ultrasound is too high a frequency to hear with your ear, but it's still a, a vibration. So how do you use that to actually image inside a body? Well, um, just as vibrations travel into the body, so does ultrasound. So if you, can make, if you can make the top of your body vibrate, that vibration kind of travels in and it bounces back off bits of the body and then it gets received back by um, an ultrasound probe and that, that essentially forms an image of a sort of cross-section into the body. So this is kind of like sonar. If you're looking for a submarine in water, you send a pulse of sound in, you get reflections back off anything hard and stiff like a submarine and then you can work out where that's come from. You can work out where the submarine is. It, it's very much like sonar, yeah, same sort of technology. Okay, so you've got an ultrasound machine here. So yeah. can you show, how, show us how it works? Well, I mean, most of these ultrasound probes, this is a typical high-frequency small parts probe. So this is for, this is for scanning um, breast or muscles or things like that. Um, this is an array of crystals along here. So there's probably a couple of hundred crystals along yeah. there. And um, when you hit those crystals with a little elect electronic pulse, they vibrate, and that, that vibration sends sound out it bounces back and then the vibration gets turned back into an electronic pulse and then that goes back down the, down the wire to the machine and it's the, the amount of that signal that gets displayed. So why do you need 200 of these crystals? Because um, sending one echo out and getting it back will give you a single sort of line, if you like, of data. We want an image, we want a cross-section. So what we do is we repeat that lots and lots and lots of times. So you get a little bit of sound sent back and then received here and then you do it with the next set of crystals and then the next set of crystals and you, eventually you get a whole kind of image. So each one's got some kind of lens on the front which focuses it into a beam? Well, in, in, in the, what's called the elevational direction, so in this direction, there's a sort of long lens on the front of this which is focusing it into a sort of thin wedge. Focusing in this direction, which is called the lateral direction, is by you fire lots of these crystals simultaneously with very, very slightly different delays. And then that has the effect of, of sort of focusing the sound into a sort of narrow beam. So it's kind of a, a lens in one direction and um, sort of electronic focusing in the other direction. But you end up with a roughly a thin beam of sound coming out. Okay, so can you show us what it produces? If... Certainly, yeah. So I need water here because um, if you scan in air, um, nothing comes back. Basically, the, the air reflects the entire sound at, at this point. And in fact, what you can see on the screen is a picture of the top surface of the probe um, lots and lots and lots of times. Um, but with a bit of water, I can make it make contact with, with my arm. So here, there are various bits of muscle and tendon. I won't pretend to explain which bits of muscle and tendon, but there, there are. And if I move my fingers, you can see that different bits are moving around. In fact, if I get my... There we go, that's my thumb. So the line along the bottom, is that a reflection of sound, of the sound coming Yeah, out? so all those lines are boundaries in the body which are reflecting sound back. Um, the big bright... Um, line right at the bottom is actually bone um, and sound gets pretty much entirely reflected by bone you don't see anything past bone surface so which is why this is used for imaging soft tissue or babies or anything where you don't have to actually image past bone okay so you're trying to do something a bit more sophisticated with ultrasound machines what's that yeah well um, normally what you see in an ultrasound image is just the amount of sound reflected that's what the image is of so what we're trying to do is use exactly the same signals going out and back, but use them to image stiffness. Um, i turn the imaging on there. Now, this doesn't look like very much if I image my arm because uh, my muscles are actually pretty much all the same stiffness. But um, if you have kind of a, a lump or a bump or something that might potentially be cancerous, that usually is stiffer than the surrounding tissue. Um, and that really pops out very clearly in this kind of image of stiffness. Um, it's what clinicians feel for when they're kind of prodding you, it's called manual palpation. But this, this kind of is a, is a sort of imaging way of um, having a much more precise kind of palpation, essentially. And I guess you actually get an image, and I guess also it can go a lot deeper into the body because a surgeon can't really poke all the way into your body cavity properly. Yeah, exactly. So this can see things of, say, a millimetre across at four or five centimetres depth, uh, which you wouldn't be able to feel if you just prodded, yeah. So have you got anything which we can actually look at with this? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I, I've got a phantom here which has been deliberately built. It's full of a material which is supposed to mimic tissue. 
um, at least to an Octan probe. <laughs> um, but within that has been, have been placed um, some spheres which are stiffer than the background material. So you can see on the screen here, on the right, is what you would see on a normal ultrasound machine, so not very much in this case. Yeah. And on the left is one of these stiffness images where you can see very clearly there's a, there's a big black blob there. Um, in these images, black is stiff. So how are you actually measuring the stiffness of it? Well, what we do is um, we look at multiple images. So we get, um, say, 50 per second. And we're tracking how the anatomy is moving at a very fine scale as I very, very gently move the probe. I'm actually moving the probe up and down here. You probably can't see that because I'm moving it so slowly. Um, but if you imagine a really stiff thing in the middle of some soft stuff, if you press that, the soft stuff is all going to squish, yeah. but the stiff thing will just move. Um, so if you can track that very finely, and then in fact we, we, we differentiate that, you end up with a, a, a strain image. And that will be, you'll have very low strain in the stiff objects, which aren't, aren't squishing, and very high strain in the soft objects. And you display, display that as an image up here, and, and that gives you an idea of the stiffness. If you get two bits of your signal which are moving together, then they're probably stiff. And if they're moving differently, then they're probably squishy. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, and although on the conventional image it's almost impossible to see, it really shows up well on the strain image. Yeah, it, it's, um, although it's using the same the same sound, the same physics. In fact, there's nothing different about the way the probe is working, which is why I can show you both images, because I'm using the same signal. Um, the stiffness image is, is showing you a completely different material parameter. It's something that you don't normally see at all with normal ultrasound. You see sound reflection. So this is showing you um, stiffness, which is a completely different thing. 